Satoru Mikami is killed after being stabbed. He awakens in a cave in an unfamiliar fantasy world to discover that he has been reincarnated as a slime, possessing various skills formed from his final thoughts before death. While exploring the cave, gaining new skills along the way with the aid of a great sage residing in his mind, the slime comes across and befriends an ancient dragon named Veldora, who was sealed in the cave centuries ago. The slime, who was given the new name of Rimuru Tempest, helps Veldora to find a way to break his seal by using his predator skill to swallow him inside of his body and analyze it from both sides. After gaining some more skills from swallowing other creatures, Rimuru finds his way out of the cave after a group of human adventurers open up the entrance. Rimuru then encounters a group of goblins, who ask for his help in protecting them against the group of dire wolves. Working together with the goblins, Rimuru battles against the dire wolves and kills their leader, forcing them to surrender. Convincing the goblins and dire wolves to live together in harmony, Rimuru gives them all names, but then passes out for three days due to overexhausting his magic. When he wakes up, he discovers the names he had given to the goblins and dire wolves had caused them all to evolve. Realizing that the goblins have no skills to craft houses and clothes, Rimuru and a small group set off to the town of Dwargan to seek help from dwarf artisans. Arriving at Dwargan with Gobita, the goblin, Rimuru ends up getting in a fight with some thugs and is thrown in jail. Rimuru is eventually set free after providing the guards with potions and is introduced to Kajin, the blacksmith. Using the magic steel ore he had gathered in the caves, Rimuru helps Kaijin fulfill an order of long swords in exchange for his help in providing artisans for the goblin village. As Rimuru and the dwarves celebrate at an elf bar, a figure approaches. A fortune teller elf decides to predict Rimuru's destined one, showing him of a vision of a girl parting ways with her family. When Vesta, the minister who ordered the swords, arrives and insults Rimuru, Kaijin punches him in anger, resulting in both him, Rimuru, and the other dwarves getting arrested and put on trial. During the trial, the hero king Gazel Dwargo, who has a history with Kaijin, exiles him and his men, who join Rimuru as his team of artisans. After also exiling Vesta for his dishonest actions, Gazel, noticing Rimuru's connections with Veldora, dispatches a ninja to follow him. When the group of adventurers who discovered Veldora's disappearance from the cave, Aaron, Cavill, and Guido are ordered by a guildmaster to investigate the forest, a masked girl named Shizu asks to join them. When they run into trouble, they are rescued by Rimuru who recognizes Shizu from the elf's vision. As Shizu reveals she was summoned to this world from Japan during the war, Rimuru shares some of his memories of a modern, peaceful Japan. What Rimuru doesn't know, however, is that Shizu's summoner, the demon king Leon Cromwell, has made her the vessel of the fire spirit Ifrit. Shizu recalls the anguish she felt when the Ifrit inside her killed her friend after considering her an enemy. Just as Shizu prepares to leave with the adventurers, Ifrit once again takes control of her and unleashes his flames upon the village. With his water attacks proving ineffective, Rimuru copies Eren's ice magic spell to take care of Ifrit's minions. Discovering that he is immune to fire attacks, Rimuru uses his predator ability to swallow Ifrit, separating him from Shizu in the process. Shizu tells Rimuru about someone known as the Hero, who took her in and showed her the right path before mysteriously disappearing one day. Sensing her life coming to an end, Shizu, not wishing her body to remain in this world, asks Rimuru to eat her, giving him the ability to take a human form. As Rimuru seeks out information about Leon in order to convey Shizu's final words to him, a masked man named Gelmud recruits an orc that he names Geld, with the intention of bringing forth a great orc disaster in the forest. As Rimuru familiarizes himself with the form and abilities he inherited from Shizu, the goblins come under attack by a group of ogres, who claim Rimuru has been manipulating orcs to attack their village. After a show of strength, Rimuru manages to convince the ogres that he is not their enemy, and invites them to the goblin village to talk things over. Learning that the orcs who attacked the ogre village were being led by a masked Majin, Rimuru proposes that the ogres join him as his subordinates. Agreeing to a temporary alliance until the orcs are defeated, Rimuru names the ogres Benimaru, Shuna, Shion, Hakuro, Soe, and Kurobe, evolving them into Kajins. Meanwhile, the chieftain of the Lizardmen, sensing an orc lord is controlling the thousands of orcs heading their way, sends his son, Gabidu, to enlist help from the goblins. It has been a few days since Benimaru and the other ogres joined Rimuru. Gabidu arrives at Rimuru's village to try and get everyone to serve under him to fight the orcs. Gobita is sent in to duel against Gabidu, defeating him quickly with the skills he's learned and forcing the Lizardmen to retreat. Later, Rimuru is approached by a dryad named Trainee 
who asks him to defeat the Orc Lord. Trainee explains that the Orc Lord has used a unique skill, Starved, on the Orcs, causing them to constantly crave sustenance, go berserk, and even eat their own to gain more power. Accepting Trainee's request, Rimuru sends Soe to negotiate with the Lizardmen for an alliance, as the Chieftain urges his soldiers not to engage in battle with the Orcs until Rimuru's group arrives. Gaibaru, swayed by the words of Gelman's messenger, Laplace, usurps the chieftain's position and leads the lizardmen into a direct attack on the orcs, unaware of the orc lord's true power. Rimuru's group comes across Gabadu's sister, who informs them of Gabadu's coup d'etat and asks them to rescue the chieftain and save the lizardmen. Meanwhile, Gabadu and his troop find themselves cornered after the orcs eat one of their soldiers and gain their powers. As Trainee discovers Gelmud and Laplace and forces them to leave the forest, Gabadu struggles against the orc general, but is rescued by the arrival of Rimuru's group. The gang defeat the general and most of the orc army, while Sue rescues the chieftain, after which Rimuru goes to confront Geld, the orc lord. Gelman suddenly appears, revealing he created the Orc Lord in order to turn him into a new Demon Lord. After failing to beat Rimuru, Gelmud is killed and devoured by Geld, who evolves into the Demon Lord Orc disaster that proves too powerful for the Kajins to defeat. Realizing Geld's power, Rimuru has the Great Sage take control of his body in order to fight against him. But after Geld develops fire resistance, Rimuru resumes control and engages in a battle with Geld to see who can consume the other first. Learning that Geld was on a search to end the famine affecting his people before he was manipulated by Gelmud, Rimuru devours his sins along with his body. Afterwards, as the orcs are freed from starved effects, the Kijins decide to continue serving under Rimuru. Rimuru forms the Jara Forest Alliance to allow the Lizardmen, Goblins, and Orcs to live together in harmony, inadvertently ending up as the Alliance Chancellor. Rimuru bestows the name of Geld onto the Orc Lord's son, evolving him into the Orc King and the other Orcs into High Orcs. Then he gives the Lizardman Chiefman a name Abidu. Later, Gabidu is excommunicated and exiled from the Lizardmen, and embarks on a journey. Three months later, Dwarf King Gazel and his army appear at the Goblin Village to challenge Rimuru to a duel, and determine his true nature. After Rimuru succeeds in blocking all of his strikes, and upon learning the two shared the same swordmaster, Hakuro, Gazel accepts he's not evil and offers a treaty between their groups. The Jura Tempest Federation is formed and recognized as an official nation. Two days after forming an alliance with Rimuru, Gazel visits again, bringing Vesta, who apologizes to Rimuru and Kaishin for the trouble he had caused in the past and begins to work for them as a researcher. Gabidu and his sister, along with several other lizardmen, also become Rimuru's servants, evolving into dragon newts after Rimuru names them. Sometime later, Milimnava, one of the demon lords, takes an interest in the Jura Forest after the orc lord's defeat and approaches Rimuru. Fearing for their master's safety, Ranga and the Kijins appear to defend Rimuru, but can do little against her overwhelming power. In the end, Rimuru calms Milim down by putting some honey into her mouth, and the two become friends. With Milim deciding to live at the village with him, Rimuru's council gets concerned with Milim and Rimuru's new friendship, as the other demon lords can view it as a threat to their balance of power. Vesta succeeds in developing a full potion to equal Rimuru's potions, prompting Rimuru to accept negotiations to develop low potions in the city. Just then, Phobio, beast keeper of the demon lord Carrion, comes to Tempest with the intent of taking it over, but is promptly dealt with by Milim before Rimuru resolves things peacefully. Offering Milim a new weapon in exchange for information, Rimuru learns that the other demon lords have their sights set on him for foiling their plan to create a puppet demon lord. Later, the Border Survey Corps, led by a man named Yo, joined Eren's party, come to Tempest, where Rimuru asks them to take credit for defeating the Orc Lord. Meanwhile, the demon lord, Clayman, takes an interest in a powerful beast known as Charybdis and sends Tyr, the Harlequin, to investigate. While Phobio fumes over his humiliation at Milim's hands, Tyr and Footman, two of Clayman's Harlequin, approach and convince him to become a demon lord himself so he can get revenge on Milim. All he must do is let Charybdis possess his body and maintain control. Phobio breaks the seal on Charybdis, Tyr reveals she was under orders to revive Charybdis and send it Milim's way. Trainee's sister, Trya, warns Rimuru of the arrival. Born from a cloud of Veldora's magicules, Karibidis is the mindless ruler of the skies, focused only on destruction. It has summoned 13 Megalodon from the spirit world to aid in its rampage, and is heading to Jura. Rimuru and the Dwargan Empire prepare for battle. Assisted by 100 Pegasus Knights from Dwargan, Rimuru's forces destroy the Megalodons and attempt to destroy Karibidis with a full-scale attack, but fail. Rimuru then battles Karibidis himself, only to discover its position possessing Phobio, and its true target is Milim. By Rimuru's request, Milim defeats the Karibidis while sparing Phobio's life. 
After the battle, Phobio apologizes for all the trouble he caused, and his master, the demon lord Carrion, establishes a non-aggression pact with Tempest. Rimuru and the others finally discover that all the troubles they had faced recently were caused by Clayman's Harlequin. The city celebrates its victory with filleted Megalodon. That night, Rimuru has a dream about Shizu's regret over not being able to help her students, five children brought to this world. Rimuru goes to the kingdom of Ingracia with Ranga to see them. There, he meets Yuki Kagurazaka, the grandmaster in charge of the children, a teenager himself. Yuki arranges for Rimuru to teach Shizu students, but warns him that while the two of them are otherworlders who came here, the children are summons meant to be weapons for the summoner. They have so much energy in their young bodies that it will kill them within five years. Rimuru vows to honor Shizu's wish and find a way to save them. Shizu's students don't show Rimuru much respect, so he decides to show them the difference in their skill in a series of duels. Kenya uses fire magic, Chloe water magic, Gale fires magic bullets, Ryota uses body enhancements, and Alice uses puppetry to control toys to attack him. They lose and accept him as sensei. Rimuru visits Trainee, believing the children will survive if inhabited by superior spirits, since Shizu was summoned as a child, but lived to adulthood, possibly because of Ifrit. Trainee directs him to the Dwelling of Spirits, but with the Queen of Spirits the Dryad once served dead, they have lost their link to it and no longer know the entrance. While on a picnic with the students, they see a sky dragon heading to the capital, and Rimuru interferes and eats it with gluttony. Mjolnir, a merchant Rimuru's appearance saved, invites them to dinner. Mjolnir knows who Rimuru is, and Rimuru invites him to come to Tempest to help them sell their wares. He agrees. Mjolnir's assistant asks the Queen of Spirits to protect the children after dinner. She tells a curious Rimuru she came from a village near the Dwelling of Spirits. He, Ranga, and the children head to its location. Rimuru, Ranga, and the students enter the Dwelling of Spirits, and a spirit in the opening labyrinth battles them with a giant metal golem to test them, though Rimuru quickly incinerated it. The labyrinth spirit introduces herself as Ramiris, one of the ten demon lords, though she's so small no one believes her. She explains that Leon, who summoned Shizu, used to be a hero before he fell from grace and became a demon lord. Likewise, she used to be the queen of spirits before dying and returning as a demon lord. In exchange for creating a new golem for her, Ramaris agrees to aid Rimuru in summoning superior spirits. A plethora of inferior spirits answer the prayers of Gale, Alice, and Ryota, so Rimuru devours them and turns them into three new superior spirits, which successfully inhabit the three. Kenya summons and is inhabited by a superior spirit of light. An unknown spirit-like being appears, Veldora reacting to its presence. Despite Remaris's attempt to stop it, as she feels it is dangerous, it still possesses Chloe. Regardless, the dangerous energy in the five children has calmed, so they'll not die in a few years. Rimuru makes a new golem for Ramaris, and they return to Ingracia. Yuki finds it unlikely the nations that abandon the children will try to take them back, so they should be able to live normal lives. Rimuru doesn't tell Yuki how he saved them. Rimuru thinks about the past two years and declares all their problems have been solved. He gives Chloe Shizu's magic cure suppressing mask, but isn't certain why, simply feeling it was for the best. Unknown to Rimuru, a shady woman is spying on him. A dying woman summons a demon to avenge her and her partner and the demon agrees to her request, deciding it would be an amusing distraction. Shizu's Memory Shizu is summoned to the kingdom of Flitwood with other adventurers to stop a demon from taking its remains under the castle and reviving. After hearing the Silver Wings, a pair of famous adventurers were killed by the nameless demon, some try to withdraw. The minister refuses to let them leave, revealing some are possessed by demons, which causes paranoia among the group. One of the crowd, the demon from before, starts laughing claiming the knight summoned the lesser demons but does not explain. Hired to kill a demon, he reveals he intends to kill all the other adventurers present to find the responsible party. Shizu refuses to let that happen and duels with the being, who calls himself Kudo. One of his blows is reflected by Shizu's mask and takes off his arm. He decides to withdraw, saying the fight was amusing because Shizu was able to hurt him. Afterwards, Shizu recalls how Leon told her the most powerful demons were the Progenators, known by colors like Rouge, Red, and Noir, Black. One of the knights summons her to King, and takes her beneath the castle. It is revealed the King and Minister were puppets of the same demon she was hired to stop, who has taken on the persona of Orthos, the hero who previously defeated him thus gaining the name Orthos and becoming an archdemon. They intend to sacrifice the adventurers and Shizu who is still worn out from her fight to regain his full strength. 
Orthos is able to defeat her, but Kuro timely appears and kills the king and minister. He reveals he was summoned by the dying Silver Wings to avenge them and keep his promises. He scolds Orthos for being overconfident despite being a dependent of Rouge and destroys his soul. Officially, the king and minister were killed by Kuro, who Shizo then defeated. As long as they keep their story straight, Kuro says that he has no reason to target Shizu before leaving. In the post-credits, Kuro observes Rimuru through a scrying glass and declares that next time Rimuru will lead him, quote, to the truth of this lost world. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one. Season 2 Part 1 begins with Rimuru breaking the news to everyone that he's going to leave soon, since it's the final semester. He promises everyone that he'll visit them sometimes. He hands over a book to Tiss as well as the control of the class, whereas Kenya asks him what he's going to be doing next. He answers that he's a busy slime and bids farewell to the class before leaving. Rimuru hangs out with Ranga as the two teleport back to Tempest and talk about Rimuru's life after he got reincarnated as a slime. The two hope that this place lasts a long time, now that Karian has formed a non-aggression treaty with Tempest. Karian asks Rimuru to send an ambassador to each other's countries, and he sends Benimaru as the embassy's leader, and Rigor as his secretary, which brings a tear to Rigor's eyes. Rimuru establishes a press conference and he gets up on stage with cheers and hooting of a massive crowd. He gives a horrible speech and then delegates from the Juro Federation Tempest, departs to Orizania. Once the delegates head out, the people in Tempest start to prepare for the arrival of Eurozania delegates. The embassy from Eurozania arrives, bringing Albus the Golden Serpent and Sufia the White Tiger Claw. Sufia starts talking a lot of crap about humans and how Rimuru shouldn't associate with them. Yom takes offense to this, and so does Shion. A fight breaks out, Xion fights Sufia, whereas a character named Grucia starts fighting Yom instead. Xion starts charging up a maximum magic bullet, but Albus steps in and stops their battle. This was just a test to see if Rimuru and his people were worthy of the beast's respect. A welcoming party for the Eurozania embassy is held and Albus' love for the apple brandy. Albus realizes that the fruit is limited, so she proposes that the fruit be sent from Eurozania to Tempest, whereas the Tempest liquor will be sent to Eurozania. The merchant overseer Dogman Kobe is made to be the overseer for trade negotiations with Albus and Sufia. The Eurozania delegates leave with some staying behind, including Grucius, whereas Benimaru and Rieger return. They bring news saying that Tempest is ahead of Eurozania in many ways. However, the agricultural aspects are much better there in Eurozania. We also learned that Benimaru had challenged Karian to a fight, by the way, and he did lose since Karian is pretty freaking overpowered. Rimuru, along with the Goblin Riders, Shion, Shura, the Dwarves, and Ranga, head to Dorgan. They head into Gazil's chambers. Meanwhile, we see Clayman with a crystal ball, which has a recording of Rimuru versus Karibidis. He promises his agent, Majuran, that he'd return her heart on one last condition. In the meeting, Rimuru discusses with Gazelle that they're aiming to replace Falmuth as the major trade center. Next day, an announcement is made that Dwargan and the Tempest Nation are now allies, and our heroes get ready to leave. In the other end of the continent, Yom and Majuran have a light sparring contest, after which they become friends and head to the Tempest Nation. Yom and Majuran reach Tempest, and he tells everyone that Majuran will be their military advisor against magic, because they probably need help in that department. Rimuru passes all the kids in their exams, Rimuru speaks with guard Majolmi, and they form a safety pact with Balm meaning both nations will protect each other and come to each other's aid. Guard is a bit scared that Falmouth might be looking to invade them now that Tempest is becoming the trade center. Cut to Falmouth and we see the king discussing the best strategies of attacking Tempest right now after seeing its growing influence. Archbishop Raymond is a new guy who comes up with a solid plan. They'll make it look like Tempest attacked a regular citizen from Falmouth, and use it as a catalyst to attack them all. They will send three otherworlders joined by a hundred knights. The three otherworlders are Shogo, Kirara, and Kyoya. Yom and Majuran are having some alone time. Later, we see her being contacted by Clayman, who has control of her heart and is forcing her to be a double agent. He has one last job for her. If she doesn't do it, he'll kill her and Yom too. So he recons the area and returns with news, stating knights from Falmouth are approaching. 
The other worlders arrive just after Benimaru and the rest are contacted by Albus to let their people stay in Tempest as refugees since Eurizania is heading to war with a demon lord named Malim. Kirora puts up a show and pretends someone grabbed her butt. Her ability called Bewilder allows her to make everyone believe her lies. Nobody believes her though as Shuna and Shion arrive. A fight breaks out and Majoran's orders from Clayman force her to turn the area into a non-magic area, cutting the city's communications off. Majoran gets caught by Grucius, but the truth is exposed. Yom walks in and hears everything, and tells Majoran that he loves her no matter what. Then she cuts off the comms anyways. The Archbishop then casts Prison Field over the whole area. Rimuru is caught in a barrier on his way back to Tempest, and he's approached by Hinata Shakaguchi, captain of the Holy Knights of the Empire Rubrios. Hinata says something in the lines of Tempest Nation's destruction must happen, so Rimuru has to die. In the Tempest Nation, the Otherworlders are kicking ass and bullying Shuna and Shion due to their magic being barred. Hinata turns out to be the former student of Shizu and believes Rimuru killed her. The fight takes every inch of Rimuru's power as he activates his gluttony ability as a last resort. Turns out Rimuru's monstrous form here was never himself. He just used it as a distraction so he could slip away mid-fight. Hinata was simply too powerful. He teleports nearby to some side characters and explains the situation. He then finds a way to head back to Tempest where he intervenes with Benimaru trying to kill Majuren for disrupting their comms, while Grucius and Yom both fight to protect her. He stops the madness and agrees to hear her out. He doesn't understand her explanation, so she shows him the dead bodies of the many goblins that died in the massacre. He remembers that he had ordered them not to hurt humans in Season 1, which is why they didn't defend themselves, and that makes him feel a lot of guilt. Majoran tries to upset Rimuru into killing her, so he would leave Yom and Grucius out of it. He stays calm though and tries to understand her. During a conference, they come to a conclusion that the Holy Church and Falmouth planned this attack together, as the Holy Church hates monsters whereas Falmouth wants to remain the trade center. Majoran then comes clean and tells them all about working for Clayman. Way too much happens in episode 8, it starts with the news that Shion and Gabzo were killed during the battle, so no more pig pouncy boobs and the series left for Rimuru to gawk at. The three adventurers from season 1 return and tell Rimuru there's a way to bring dead people back to life. Zoe on the other hand discovers the Western Holy Church's armies all camped out around the city, guarded by magic devices. It turns out that there's a way to revive dead people if you become a demon lord, and Rimuru had already acquired a demon lord seed when he defeated the orc disaster in season 1. He has all the conditions marked so he can transform into a true demon lord if he consumes 10,000 human souls. Conveniently, Falmouth forces begin to converge on the Tempest Nation. He tells Majorin to die and stabs her in the heart after she gives Yom a kiss goodbye. It turns out he didn't kill her, just destroyed her heart and gave her an artificial heart of his own creation to rid her of Clayman's influence. Not to mention he's about to kill the entire Falmouth forces, including the king. So Yom is up for promotion as the new king of Falmouth. Everyone prepares for war, Majorin and Shuna are assigned to replace the barrier, and everyone else has a proper role in the plan. Benimaru, Gabaru, and Soe all decimated the knights on their side of the battlefield and destroyed the magical devices. The three other worlders are also attacked by our heroes. Geld beats up Shogo, meanwhile Hakuro kills Gyoya straight up. Shogo makes a run for it after Geld uses his riot ability. Shogo finds Kirara and kills her to use the survivor ability. That does nothing though. Geld kicks his ass down and Shogo regenerates. Then he gets his ass kicked again and again and again and again, until a new character named Rosin appears. He takes Shogo and teleports out. All four magical devices are now destroyed. Shuna and Majoran recreate the barrier to keep the souls in. Now, Rimuru prepares to kill the entire army. Before that, though, Rosin kills Shogo and takes over his body instead of helping him, making him the most powerful Majin in Falmouth's history. Rimuru is shown killing everyone and everything he lays eyes on in the final moments. Falmouth forces are a fish in the barrel due to the magical barrier, so they can't escape. He keeps killing them one by one, taking out hundreds and thousands, and reaching closer to the 10,000 goal so he can transform into a demon lord. He even kills Rosin and thus pushes the king to open negotiations. He tries to lie his way out of this, but Rimuru blows his arm off. Rimuru uses his new skill Merciless, which takes out any soldiers who give up in the face of battle. He takes out all the soldiers using this ability and is ready to transform into a demon lord. After his transformation, he summons three demons who aim to serve him, and all of his other followers will receive extra perks, now two. 
They take the king, archbishop, and all other followers into custody, and Rimuru transforms from a slime into a demon slime. Then we go through a bunch of random bullshit about skills being upgraded. Merciless is traded for an upgraded gluttony, which is then upgraded to the Bialsabub skill. It turns out Rosin is still alive due to Shogo's survivor ability. Rosin then gets bullied by Black, one of Rimuru's new demons, until he passes out. Rimuru's transformation completes, and he uses the magic kills energies to resurrect everyone around him. But he doesn't have enough energy, so he uses the other two demons he had created earlier and uses their energy to use the spirit art of resurrection. He then passes out. Rimuru regains consciousness in Shion's arms, with her boobs resting on top of his jello head. His followers had all evolved into more powerful beings, along with his great sage ability, which transformed into an ability named Raphael. Cut to Malim and Eurizania, as Carrion decides to take her on alone, while everyone else retreats. However, demon lord Frey jumps in and grabs Carrion from the back, and slits his throat, killing him. Eurizania is entirely wiped out, but the citizens are brought to safety in Tempest. It turns out Frey was seen flying back to Clayman's domain after the fight had occurred. After the meeting, Black requests Rimuru to allow Black to serve him. Rimuru agrees to this and gives him the name Diablo, increasing his power level by a lot. Now, Rimuru has a few things on his mind, a few concerns, if you will. The inevitable showdown with Clayman is coming up, the aftermath of battling Falmouth and the king who's captured at the moment, as well as the Western Holy Church and Hinata Sakaguchi who are still after them. However, Raphael chimes in and tells Rimuru that everything's going to be fine, because Valdora is almost free. Raphael uses his soul energy to create a body double for Valdora's soul to inhabit, which turns him into a blonde chad guy with red tattoos on his face. This is where part one ends and part two begins. Rimuru and Veldora arrive at the Jura Tempest Federation after Veldora's gotten his new body. Rimuru introduces Veldora to everyone, but no one believes it's him. Trainee arrives and shows respect to her lord Veldora. The citizens then celebrate their lord's arrival, while Rimuru explains to Benimaru and Rigurd how he freed Veldora and why he kept this secret. Shion turns into a better cook than ever before due to her new ultimate skill. After celebrating is over with, Rimuru talks to the Beast Keepers where they plan to save Carrion and defeat Demon Lord Clayman. During the meeting, the Dwarf King Gazel Dwargo arrives and tells them that the Kingdom of Farmanis will attack them, so he came in with reinforcements. Rimuru explains that he's already taken care of it, but Erald Grimwald, Archduke of the Sorcerer's Dynasty, Sarian, arrives and attacks Rimuru. Eren arrives and stops him, apologizing for her father's actions. Now they're all part of this big meeting. We get a glimpse into the inner sanctum of the Holy Empire, Ruberios. A man named Laplace is confronted by a vampire in priest robes. He gets torn to shreds by the vampire's red beam attack. In the next scene, Laplace is completely fine and holding an audience with Yuki Kagurazaka, the Free Guild's Grandmaster. Yuki notifies him that the transfer of the Alliance's president's soul into a homunculus is complete, and points Laplace to an elf woman named Kigali. Laplace laughs at the current form of the president when comparing it to her prior appearance, as he welcomes the president Kazarim back. He tells Yuki of the vampire attack in the inner sanctum that he faced, and Kigali realizes it's the demon lord Valentine, who also goes by the name Blood Tyrant. They decide to hold Walpurgis of the Demon Lords, since they had the required amount of Demon Lords in Clayman, Milim, and Frey. Meanwhile, in Tempest, meetings between the monsters and foreign leaders takes place. Everyone is shocked at the sight of Eldora, and Fuse faints out of pure shock. Gazelle and Erald request a private conversation with Rimuru, where Rimuru explains all the events leading up to the current moment. Erald promises friendly relations with Tempest while they create a fake story to tell the public regarding Falmouth's army's disappearance. Fuse is shocked again when he hears Rimuru fought Hinata Sakaguchi, and he wonders who sold him out to Hinata. He thinks of all the people who know his history with Shizu, and only Yuki comes to mind. Raphael confirms his suspicions that it was indeed Yuki. Rimuru and the rest of the people are still in the meeting. Rimuru shares his plans to back Yom as the new king of Falmouth. Gazelle tests him with a series of questions to see if he has what it takes to rule a kingdom, and Yom answers everything truthfully to the best of his abilities. Gazelle appreciates the young, aspiring king and likes his answers. Meanwhile, Erald begins to respect Rimuru as a man of honor after he hears Rimuru say that all he wants is a world that is truly consumed by peace, with no sadness, only prosperity, love, and smiles. Now united, Rimuru and his allies look forward to their biggest enemy, 
Clayman, who was currently preparing for the Walpurgis, the meeting of all the demon lords. As the meeting concludes, Romerys enters with an ominous warning regarding the fate of the Tempest Nation. Romerys warns the united leaders that she's been summoned to the Walpurgis. Shion, on the other hand, has been working her way around the prisoners through torture and it works because she finds some genuinely critical information. She finds that the Western Holy Church plans to attack them in the name of God. Primaru orders Diablo to help several of the leaders in escorting the prisoners back to their homeland, and to also make sure regarding the security matters there. The scout sightings come with a report that an army of 30,000 soldiers is approaching Tempest. Rimuru decides that their targets are the remaining Eurasanian refugees, who Clayman intends to kill in order to become a true demon lord, although that doesn't matter because they're unable to stop the approaching attack. The talk is still on in Tempest, with all these species supporting Rimuru's decision to throw Clayman off. Raphael and Rimuru devise a plan to teleport the entire army and cut off Clayman's attack. However, Rimuru wants to end it before that is necessary, so Rimuru decides to attend the Walpurgis himself. Meanwhile, Diablo and Xion go against each other to see who's better to accompany Rimuru, but come to quick agreement over their respect for Rimuru. Rimuru decides to bring Xion and Ranga with him to the Walpurgis, while Ramiris takes Beretta and Trainee with her. Later, Rimuru and Raphael come up with a plan to teleport the Eurasanian citizens. He teleports them to Geld, who has created a safe place for the refugees to live in just the span of one night. Now, with the Eurasanian citizens in Tempest, the only thing to worry about was Clayman and his armies, who will take Rimuru's allied forces of 20,000 in open combat. It's time for no mercy. Now, Benimaru and the 20,000 travel to Eurasania to fight Clayman's army. Erald returned to Sarion, Gazelle returned to Dwargan, and Yom and Majuran headed to Falmouth with Diablo beside them. The remaining of our crew prepared for the Walpurgis. Meanwhile, Clayman uses Frey to make Milim wear a necklace, with which he uses a spell named Demon Marionette, which gives her complete control over Milim's actions. He now has the ultimate Demon Lord puppet that he can fully control. The pre-Walpurgis banquet begins with Demon Lord Platinum Saber, aka Leon Cronwell's arrival into the chamber of old friend Guy Crimson. They discuss their plans over Clayman and Rimuru, one of four true dragons, the White Ice Dragon Velzard makes her first appearance due to the news and fact that her brother, the Storm Dragon Valdora, has awakened, and Rimuru has a link to him for breaking his seal. Leon leaves, but Guy makes sure to ask Velzard if she would accompany her to Walpurgis. She declines, stating that she's not interested in it. It all adds up with the connection, which makes Walpurgis all the more interesting for the higher demon lords. The stage is set for the moment that will be defining this series unlike anything else. Rimuru continues with preparations for Walpurgis, including pouring the soul of Trainee into a doll made out of the Dryas tree. This evolves Trainee into a Dryas doll dryad, which grants her full freedom to go anywhere she wants, and will also allow her to accompany Ramiris without any concerns. Benimaru acquires the skill Born Leader, which lets him read the enemy's movements efficiently. He also comes up with a plan to destroy Clayman's castle, which is believed to be behind the fog. Hokoro and Soe are meant to go, but Shuna insists on joining them. Though hesitant, Rimuru agrees to let her join them, as this is the perfect window to strike, and also the best opportunity to find Demon Lord Carrion and rescue him. They are to attack right after Walpurgis begins. Benimaru appoints Albus as the secondary commander for the battle. Now Benimaru and his forces lead Clayman's army into a trap set by Gelb. As the army falls into the trap, the three Beast Keaters head out to attack. Gavidu uses Vortex Crush to take out a large portion of the army, and then the rest are faced by Geld as they try to climb out of the hole. It's a one-sided battle as Clayman's army gets absolutely decimated at the hands of our heroes. Benimaru orders Albus, Sophia, and Fobio to bring them the head of their enemy's leader. Fobio takes the fight directly to Footman and Tear. Geld joins him and the two fight, whereas Albus has located Yamaza of the Five Fingers, but he deceives her with a surprise attack. However, Gobita and the Goblin Riders arrive to help Albus out, but they quickly realize that Albus can take them on her own, and they leave her to decimate her opponent. Hermes is throwing hands against Gabidu, who is proving to be a tough opponent for the Dragon Faithful. Meanwhile, Sufia is not having the best of luck against head priest Midray himself. She's having trouble keeping up with his speed and strength. Gabidu, on the other hand, defeats Hermes and has him at the tip of his trident. Midray then takes on both Gabidu and Sufia at the same time. Albus, on the other hand, is showing Yamza what true pain tastes like. 
until he receives his trump card, a shadow clone. It turns out though, Albus is still confident that it's a shitty trump card, and it turns out that it's actually quite bad, because she pulls out her beast form and rips the dragon faithful to shreds, and disintegrates Yamza's doppelganger and puts him on his knees by breaking his limbs. He obviously surrenders, what else can you do in a situation like that? However, Clayman feeds him an orb as a puppet master, which turns him into a bloated monster known as Caribidus. Midray stops fighting Gabadu and Sufia at the site of Caribidus, and they team up to repel the monster's fury. Albus stays the fight, but Benimaru arrives to the scene and launches a full frontal assault by using Vanish Hell Flare. He destroys the monster in one hit, completely disintegrating it into non-existence. Benimaru is almost about to attack Midray and Hermes as well as the Dragon Faithful, but he's stopped by Gabadu and Sufia who tell him they're the servants of Lady Milim. On the other end of the battle, Geld and Fabio are being bullied by Footman and Tyr, until the two Clayman supporters escape by teleporting away. The two lay on the ground, happy they survived and swearing they'll win next time. In Tempest, Rimuru, Shion, and Ranga are preparing for the Walpurgis with the help of Shuna. Shuna then takes her leave and teleports away from them, so she can aid with the attack on Clayman's castle. Rimuru is briefed about who will be at the Walpurgis, as Veldora talks about how he has no interest in attending such events. He recalls all the demon lords he's fought, as well as the demon lords he remembers, flaunting his strength. During their conversation, a demon with the same presence as Diablo enters the scene. She's a woman named Misery, who was ordered by demon lord Guy Crimson to bring Rimuru to him. A portal opens up and all six of the heroes enter through it, leaving Feltora behind. In Eurizania, Soe, Hakoru, and Shuna are looking for Clayman's castle within the fog. They fall into a trap and a swarm of skeleton soldiers spawn around them. It is led by Adelman, the index finger of Clayman, also known as the White King. He orders them to leave or submit their lives to him. They realize they have no escape other than to defeat Adelman. So Hakoro attacks Adelman but is met by an undead swordsman. Soe tries to launch a surprise attack on the White King but is delayed by an undead dragon, known as the Death Dragon. Soe uses his mystic thread strike to tear the dragon to pieces, but it just resurrects back into its regular form. It seems that the dragon and the army's soul is inside Adelman. So Shuna decides to take him all on her own, while the two warriors keep the attackers at bay. She's attacked by the skeletal soldiers, but repels them with alignment field. A one versus one battle between Adelman and Shuna begins. Magical strikes are thrown left and right, attacks are repelled and pushed back, counterattacks are thrown. However, Shuna quickly overpowers the White Knight and uses Overdrive, and decimates him entirely. The trio now has its eyes on Clayman's castle, but it turns out Adelman is still alive and swears his complete allegiance to Princess Shuna, who had proven herself as a champion of magic, who later makes them realize Rimuru is who they should be worshipping. Adelman takes them to Clayman's castle, Rimuru arrives at the scene where Walpurgis is about to begin. He takes a seat and starts seeing the demon lords arrive to the scene. Guy Crimson is already there in a chair. The giant race demon lord Dagrel enters, followed by demon lord Valentine the vampire, as well as a yawning young man who turns out to be the demon lord Dino. Ramaris and Dino start arguing, but it seems they're happy to see each other after a while. Demon Lord Frey also joins the scene with a lion-headed harpy with her, which Raphael suspects to be Carrion. Leon stands behind Rimuru and they both have a heated conversation about Shizu. Milim enters the scene along with Clayman accompanying her. He hits Milim in front of everyone and this shocks everyone at the Walpurgis. The two have a seat and the Walpurgis begins. At the Walpurgis, Clayman tries to portray Rimuru as an evil conniving little brat whose entire goal is to wreak havoc and create chaos. He talks about how Carrion planned to destroy things with the help of Rimuru and lured him into doing all of this, as well as destroying the armies of Falmouth. He also mentions how Milim defeated Carrion to save Clayman because she loved him so much. He then says that Rimuru is a lowly magic born, playing a part of a demon lord. However, he messes up by saying that Majurin was killed by Rimuru, which was Rimuru's plan all along. Rimuru shows them proof of Majoran's safety as well as Yamza's transformation into Caribidus at Clayman's control. Clayman tries to convince the whole Walpurgis that Rimuru is a liar, but no one seems to be believing any of what Clayman is spouting. Rimuru gets up and gives a speech about peace and all that good shit, and then he declares Clayman as his enemy. He challenges Clayman to a battle, and the demon lords agree they'll purge Clayman if Rimuru wins. Clayman agrees to the battle, but in his stead, he sends a mind-controlled Milim forward. 
Rimuru had already planned to break Milim out of Clayman's mind control, so he would do it through a tough fight now. Clayman spawns three demon beasts, a man in black robe, Milin, to fight alongside him, quickly outnumbering Rimuru, Ranga, and Shion. Rimuru fights Milin, meanwhile Shion takes on the robed figure and Clayman. Ranga takes on all three of the demon beasts using his doppelgangers. However, this seems to not be enough, as our four heroes are fighting for their lives. Beretta jumps into battle to aid Rimuru, and he helps Shion repel the robed android's attacks. However, Milim quickly overpowers Rimuru and lands a killing blow. But at the very last second, Veldora jumps in and takes the hit for him. As it turns out, he's seemingly unfazed by the heavy hit. Rimuru orders Veldora to spar with Milim after talking about her being controlled, and heads back to Ranga. He sees that the beasts on the side of Clayman have curses on them, where they have been mind-controlled. Rimuru frees the beasts of their curse, on the other side of the arena, Beretta has managed to take the android completely apart. Veldora, on the other hand, is just using Street Fighter 2 moves on Milim to simply play with her along with a Kamehameha. Honestly, one of the best scenes I think I've ever seen in an anime. This shit was, was hilarious. Shion and Clayman still fight as Clayman is doing everything in his power to beat her, but she's just too strong for him. Or rather, he's too weak. Clayman turns into his beast form, but he's still too weak for Rimuru and Veldora, and Milim reveals that she was never in his control anyways, and that she was just playing Clayman like a fiddle. Shion carves through Clayman like butter, and they're teleported back to the Walpurgis. Carrion is alright and safe, Rimuru and Carrion shake hands as the peace between Tempest and Eurizania is now written in stone. However, just as things seem to be over, Clayman finally begins to awake as a true demon lord. Rimuru says he will defeat Clayman all on his own. Clayman launches a ball of dark energy at Rimuru, but Rimuru uses Beelzebub and digests it, using it to create a barrier to trap them both inside. Now they must fight to the death. After getting a heavy beating by Rimuru, Clayman tries to crawl away screaming and crying, yelling for help. Rimuru uses Beelzebub, draining Clayman of all of his energy until there's nothing left. Rimuru is recognized as a true demon lord at the Walpurgis. Milim has made the demon lord in charge of Eurizania, whereas Carrion simply lives off as the king of the beast kingdom instead. Rimuru decides a new name for the demon council, which he names the Eight Star Demon Lord's Octogram. Elsewhere in Ruberios, Laplace is getting chased by Hinata, who thinks that the lack of the demon lord's absence means a lack of security. Roy returns from the Walpurgis, who is confronted by Laplace. Roy tells him that Clayman is dead, after which Laplace tears his heart out after hearing of his friend's doomed fate. He laughs hysterically. The kingdom of Tempest, Eurizania, Falmuth, Blumund, and even the Dark Lords all prosper in the time of peace after Clayman's demise. The people cheer for Rimuru as their savior. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.